VHS 今日は、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私たちは、私
For he is a chosen vessel unto me. A chosen vessel unto God. The Lord was referring to Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul the Apostle. And the Lord said he had a duty for him, a responsibility for him, an assignment for him, a ministry for him. And to carry out that ministry and to carry out that assignment, he says, he is a vessel, a chosen vessel, he says. And he says, to bear my name, to carry my name, to take my name to the Gentiles, before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. And so you understand when the New Testament talks about the vessel, it's talking about a chosen instrument in the hand of God to take the word, to take the gospel to the people beyond. When you think about a vessel, you think about a container. You think about something that has precious treasure inside. And when we talk about the servant of God, about the vessel, we're talking about the one that has the life-saving gospel, the truth, to declare unto people heavenly goods to, de to deliver to perishing souls. If the vessels are, cor are cor corroded, then the water inside the oil inside and the material inside the treasure inside will be contaminated and so ungodly lives that is contaminated vessels corroded vessels rusty vessels vessels that are not really clean vessels that are not in the proper position to hold the heavenly treasure in it and then with false messages instead of giving life will kill instead of giving life will destroy instead of healing and saving souls will actually heal the souls from getting saved and getting to heaven unclean vessels do not bring honor and glory to God. Let's come back to that Second Timothy chapter two. Second Timothy chapter two. I'm reading from verse twenty here. It says, "But in a great house, it's talking about a large church. It's talking about a big family. It's talking about a church with many members and many workers and many leaders and many pastors." It says, "But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold." and vessels of silver it says that those who are precious that those who are clean that those who are righteous and there are those who are living up to the mark but then it says but also there are vessels of wood and vessels of earth and then it says some to honor those ones that are clean those ones that are upright those ones that uh, allow the free flow of the unction of the Lord to flow through them without any defilement, without any contamination. It says there are, there are some to honor, but, but it says, unfortunately, there are some to dishonor. And you come to Isaiah chapter 65. Isaiah chapter 65. Here we're reading from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 65. And we're reading from verse 3. It tells us here in verse 3, it says, I said, chapter 65, verse 3, a people that provoked me to anger continually to my face. God was talking about the children of Israel. They were supposed to be vessels unto honor. But it says, these are people that provoke him to anger continually to his face, and the sacrifice that sacrificeth in gardens and Bonnet incense upon altars of brick. That is, the incense they were not supposed to burn, and the sacrifices they were not supposed to render or to sacrifice. That's what they did. Look at this, verse 4, which remain among the graves and lodge in the monuments which eat swine's flesh and broth. Look at this, of abominable things in their vessels. 
and that makes them unclean that makes them defiled that makes them unacceptable uh, and look at this look at verse 5 even with all that abomination with all that uh, contagion and with all that uh, defilement look at what he said in verse 5 uh, which say stand ye stand by thyself come not near unto me for i am holier than thou you see even though they are abominable vessels even though they are contaminated vessels even though they are defiled temple they are defiled uh, uh, vessels they will still say to other people stand by yourself i'm clean stand by yourself i'm holy stand by yourself i'm righteous and yet god said they were provoking him and they were telling other people who are better than yourself who are holier than yourself look at this right it says that this uh, is smoke in my nose and a fire that burns all the day and so you see what price god put some clean vessel righteous vessel holy vessel sincere vessel on hypocritical humble vessel you see watch it places what price it places on them we're looking at isaiah chapter 52 isaiah chapter 52 and i'm reading from verse 11 isaiah chapter 52 reading here from verse 11 departure departure go ye out from this touch no unclean thing go ye out of the midst of her be ye clean that bear the vessels of the Lord. You see that? He wants us to depart from evil, depart from iniquity, and depart from every form of unrighteousness as we bear the vessel of the Lord. If we do not depart from iniquity, from unrighteousness, then we are vessels that have, that he has no pleasure in. In Jeremiah chapter 22, Jeremiah chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 28 jeremiah chapter 22 verse 28 is this man coniah he despised broken idol you know it's referring to a man he says is this man he coniah you see he despised broken idol uh, what, what does that mean you see Coniah wanted you know the people to set her attention on him like an idol like an other god like a literal god like a demigod and then god said look at Coniah it's like a broken idol his life is not right he's even competing with the almighty god and he wants a worship he wants the attention the attention that should be given unto god look at this you see a vessel wherein is no pleasure a vessel wherein is no pleasure when we're not righteous when we're not holy when we're not upright and when we're not straightforward when we're not transparent we become vessels vessels that god has no pleasure in i'm coming to osea chapter 8 osea chapter 8 and i'm reading here from verse 8 vessels unto honor and vessels unto dishonor vessels that are clean vessels that are not really clean we're looking at to see chapter 8 and we're looking at verse 8 israel is swallowed up now shall they be among the gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure it's talking about israel the people of god but these people of god they wait and mix with the world and they, they, they wait and they mingled with the world they wait and associated with the world the world came into them and they came into the world and it says israel is swallowed up you cannot see the distinction anymore you cannot see the distinct character of an israelite anymore you cannot see the uprightness that is different that is distinguished that is unique for the children of israel because they were not they were now just like all the other people what the other people were doing they were doing what they were eating they were eating and there was no distinction between israel and the gentiles anymore they were swallowed up they were assimilated into the system of the world it says israel is swallowed up now shall they be among the gentiles as a vessel wherein is no pleasure it's telling you and telling me and telling all of us that if we're going to be vessels that god will delight in we keep that distinction 
and we keep that separation and we keep ourselves under the under the cleansing of the blood of the lamb and we're different from the people of the world we look at what israel has done look at verse 3 verse 3 it says israel has cast off the sin that is good the enemy shall pursue him you see the enemy could not touch israel before because he said do my prophets no harm he will not allow anybody to touch them but now they forsook the right way and they forsook the distinction that god had given israel and he forsook the law of god he had given to them so he said israel has cast up the sin that is good the enemy shall pursue him look at verse 12 in verse 12 he says i have reached unto him he's talking about israel he's talking about his people he's talking about the people he wanted them to be vessels unto honor precious gold and precious silver and precious stones and the people that carry the treasure of the lord to carry to all the people around them made them so different lifted high and from that high position then go to deliver the goods from heaven unto the people but you see what he did in verse 12 i have reached unto him the great things of my lord but they were counted as a strange thing. The doctrines of the Bible became strange unto them. And the stand of the Lord became strange unto them. And the things the Lord wanted to carry as treasure and give to the people became strange unto them. And God said because of that, they mixed themselves with the heathens, with the pagans, with the unbelievers. They now became vessels in which there was no pleasure. We're coming to Romans chapter 2. Romans chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 23 Romans chapter 2 I read from verse 23 in Romans chapter 2 verse 23 look at what it says over here it says um, the verse, uh, verse 23 it says uh, thou that thou that makest the boast of the Lord through breaking up the law dishonorest thou God those are vessels that dishonored God vessels in which God had no pleasure because they were bearing the law they were bearing the word of God and yet through them other people were blaspheming the name of the Lord because they were not keeping to that law look at verse 24 for the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written our vessels will be clean your vessel will be holy yeah. and look at first thessalonians chapter 4 first thessalonians chapter 4 the way he wants us to keep our vessel keep our body keep our mind keep our soul keep our spirit keep our personality and keep our lives and keep our ministry so that our lives our ministry our personality and everything we do will bring glory to God, will bring honor to God, will be vessels unto honor. We're coming to First Thessalonians chapter 4. Look at verse 3. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication. Look at this, look at this, verse 4. That every one of you, how many of us? Are you here? Are you included? Let me hear you. It says in verse 4 that every one of you should know how to possess what? His vessel in sanctification and honor. Those who are children of God, those who are believers, and those who are workers, and those who say the name, the name of Christ, it says that you should know how to possess your vessel, your vessel, everything within you that contains this treasure that comes from heaven, your heart, your soul, your spirit, your mind, your body, your tongue, your ears, your eyes, your personality that you will know how to possess everything in sanctification and honor tonight we're looking at the message the uniqueness and usefulness of God honoring vessels the uniqueness vessels of God vessels appointed by God and vessels appointed for God are unique they're distinct they're different they're not like every dick and harry and they're not like every person you see on the street the uniqueness and then the usefulness because he appoints us 
because he raises us up because he's training us because he gives the word the word of reconciliation the word of ministry the message he gives it to us he wants us to carry that to the world around us that's what makes us useful and then we honor god where god honoring vessels the message tonight the uniqueness and the usefulness of god honoring vessels there are three things we're looking at number one the distinctive features of consecrated vessels the distinctive features the distinctive marks the distinctive characteristics and the distinctive nature of vessels that are consecrated the distinctive features of consecrated vessels point number two the distinguished fruits of compliant vessels compliant vessels not contradictory vessels not vessels in conflict with other people but those who are compliant those who are submissive those who are yielded and those who comply comply with everything the lord is giving unto us it says uh, we are compliant like that obedient like that then we will be a fruit you will be a fruit the distinguished fruits of compliant vessels point number three the determined favor the destined favor the declared favor the favor that god declares on commendable vessels the determined favor for commendable vessels for commendable vessels point number one tell me your number one over there the distinctive features of consecrated vessels so we're coming back to second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 we're reading from verse 19 we're looking at the features of vessels that are consecrated to god consecrated to the service of god consecrated to the calling of god consecrated to the ministry that god has put in their hands the features the characteristics the marks look at this from verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having this seal the foundation of god standeth sure having this seal the lord knows them that are his number one conversion conversion a consecrated vessel must have gone through conversion it no longer belongs to the world it belongs to the lord it no longer belongs to satan it belongs to the lord it no longer belongs even to the human family to the earthly family it belongs to the lord it says the lord knows them that are his conversion is the number one thing there must be that change there must be that conversion if we're going to the vessels unto honor in the sight of the lord we're coming to matthew chapter 18 verse 3 matthew chapter 18 verse 3 and said verily i say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children innocent as little children tender as little children teachable as little children submissive as little children humble as little children except she be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven if a person is not going to enter the kingdom of heaven how can he bring other people to enter he does he's not inside himself he doesn't know to get in himself there must be conversion before you can be a chosen vessel in the hand of the lord look at verse 4 verse 4 whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven come back to second timothy chapter 2 verse 19 it says the lord knows who are his and let everyone let everyone let everyone that names the name of christ depart from tell me from iniquity everyone that names the name of christ uh, the, the little convert the little baby in christ he mentions the name of christ in prayer and the soul winner mentions the name of christ in prayer as we go out and we're witnessing for christ and witnessing to christ we mention the name of christ as we preach uh, over the pulpit preachers and pastors we mention the name of christ and it says let everyone 
from young to the old from the young to the old let everyone that names the name of christ depart from iniquity that's what he calls us to do we must depart from iniquity we're looking at isaiah chapter uh, 52 once again isaiah chapter 52 and here we're reading from verse 11 it's a command it's an imperative it's what he wants it's what he de desires and it is what he demands from everyone that names the name of christ and these are the characteristics of the vessels that are yielded to the lord committed to the lord consecrated unto the lord uh, i said chapter 52 verse 11 depart ye depart ye depart ye depart ye is uh, said a uh, double time there go ye out from this that is out of the world out of the pollutions of the world and out of all the degradations and defilement of the world touch no unclean thing don't even touch it don't even go near it don't let it come near you don't let a resemblance of the things and the sins and the evil of the world be part of your life touch no unclean sin go ye out from the midst of her and be ye clean that bear the vessels of the lord we're coming back to uh, second timothy chapter uh, chapter two and i'm reading here now from verse 20 the distinctive uh, marks and features of consecrated vessels number one they are converted number two they depart from all iniquity number three they are precious they are precious look at this in verse 20 verse 20 it tells us in verse 20 it says in verse 20 but in a great house they are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth some to honor and some to dishonor as we look at that verse the verse is divided into two parts uh, it says the vessels of gold some to honor the vessels of silver some to honor then it says on the other hand there are those that are not precious they're not worthy they're not witchy they're not essential they're not important they don't carry the unction from heaven and they don't take it as something you know, that is very precious to go and deliver unto the people they are ministering to they are vessels of wood and they are vessels of earth clay and it says they are to dishonor but you see if we're going to bear the precious ointment we must be precious we're coming to first corinthians chapter 3 first corinthians chapter 3 precious precious instrument of god precious vessels unto the lord in first corinthians chapter 3 i'm reading here from verse 9 for we are laborers together with god any labor for god there i said any labor for god there we are laborers together with god ye are god's husbandry ye are god's building look at this according to the grace which is given unto me as a wise master builder i have laid the foundation and another builders thereon but let everyone every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon for the foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ now if any man build upon this foundation gold silver tell me precious tools you see uh, those are the ones unto honor gold silver precious stone then look at the others now the ones to dishonor wood his trouble every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what it is precious we're coming to first peter chapter 2 first peter chapter 2 to be a vessel unto honor a chosen vessel a cleansed vessel a pure vessel a prepared vessel a vessel that carries the great ointment from on high to the people here on earth here is what must happen we're looking at first peter chapter 2 verse 1 wherefore laying aside how many kinds of malice what do you do with malice nurse them accept them I said, what do you do with malice? Swallow them up. 
think about them act on them behave with malice what shall we do lay aside and he says laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies plural and envies plural and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that he may grow thereby if so be ye have tasted that the lord is gracious to whom coming look at this as unto living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of god and tell me precious that's what he wants it to be that's what what he wants me to be he is precious and if we're going to carry his message if we're going to carry his ministry to the people who are waiting for that ministry we ourselves must be precious ye also in verse 5 as lively stones are built up in spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer our spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ look at verse 9 in verse 9 but here a chosen generation a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people distinctive distinctive features very different and distinguished from the people of the world very different from the people in the world who do not have salvation people of the world who do not know about holiness and it says here we're peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light we're coming back to second timothy i'm reading here from chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 i read from verse 21 it says if a man therefore purge himself from these he wants to be a vessel unto honor he purges himself he wants to be highly valued by the lord he purges himself he wants to be at the cutting edge of real successful ministry for the lord therefore he purges himself if a man therefore purge himself from these from what what does he purge himself from so that he can be a vessel unto honor we're looking at first corinthians chapter 5 first corinthians chapter 5 i read from verse 7 first corinthians chapter 5 we're reading from verse 7 it tells us in verse 7 purge out therefore the old leaven old character old behavior old attitude old habits old disposition purge out therefore the old leaven that she may be a new lamb as she are on leaven for even christ are passed over is sacrificed for us therefore let us keep the feast not of the old leaven neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness but with the, the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth i pray the lord will purge every one of us we'll come back to second timothy chapter 2 verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified that's another characteristic if you're going to be a distinguished uh, distinguished uh, a kind of a vessel consecrated to the lord yielded to the lord it says number one purged number two sanctified sanctified in ephesians chapter five ephesians chapter five reading from verse 25 ephesians chapter five verse 25 it tells us in verse 25 husbands love your wives amen, amen. husbands uh, we are talking to husbands now husbands love your wives amen. ah there's problem in some places husbands love your wives amen, amen. and wives love your husbands amen. wonderful look at verse 25 husbands love your wives even as christ also loved the church and gave himself for it that she might do what sanctify you see there are people i'm a worker are you sanctified i'm a worker are you converted 
I'm a worker. Are you purged? I'm a worker. Are you precious? I'm a worker. Have you departed from all iniquity? Are you sanctified? It says that he might sanctify and cleanse you to the washing of water by the word, that he might present you to himself a glorious church, glorious members glorious ministers glorious sons and daughters will make up a glorious church defiled sons and daughters will make up a defiled church compromising sons and daughters will make up a compromising church and the dishonoring sons and daughters will become will make up a dishonoring church but when the members are sanctified when the workers are sanctified when the leaders are sanctified when the men and the women are sanctified then you say that my present to himself a glorious church not having spot not having wrinkle or any such thing you know, but that it should be holy and without blemish amen, amen. all blemish will go away amen. unholiness will go away unrighteousness will go away distinctive features number one conversion number two departing departure from iniquity number three you are priceless and precious number four there is poaching number five the sanctification number six prepared prepared look at uh, second timothy chapter two i'm reading from verse 21 second timothy chapter two verse 21 if a man therefore purge himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and meet for the man sanctified and meet for the master's use and prepared unto every good work prepared unto every good work whatever area of work you're involved in you're prepared to do good this section where you are you're prepared to do good you are adding something of value and something of worth and something you know, that is commendable into the work of the Lord prepared prepared and look at Ezra chapter 7 Ezra chapter 7 this is what the Lord expects of us we cannot just uh, double into the work of God jump into the word of God we cannot just dive into the word of God and into the ministry of the word without being prepared our hearts are prepared our minds are prepared our message prepared and our family is prepared everything we do there is a preparation so that we'll be qualified for the ministry look at Ezra chapter 7 verse 10 for Ezra had prepared his heart his heart we go beyond the notes we write the references we're going to quote we could go beyond the doctrines we're going to teach we prepare our hearts Ezra had prepared Ezra to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to do it not just a preacher do as I say but don't do as I do to do it it's not just a person that says I know the doctrine I know the Bible I know the Word of God and I'm giving it to you don't look at my life don't look at whatever I do no it's not like that it's Ezra prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach in Israel statutes and judgment I pray that all of us will be well prepared in Jesus name we're coming back to second Timothy chapter 2 2 Timothy chapter 2 I'm reading now from verse 22 reading from verse 22 it says flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness faith charity peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart and this one number seven is thoroughly cleansed thoroughly cleansed now he's so cleansed that there's no remnant of unrighteousness in him no remnant of defilement in him no remnant of iniquity in him look at what's in his life is following after righteousness following after faith following after charity love following after peace and it says with well, them that call on the name of the lord out of a pure heart uh, in the past she had uh, maybe unrighteousness and sin and evil sins all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but now he is thoroughly cleansed we're looking at first Corinthians chapter 6 first Corinthians chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 9 do you not that the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God 
be not be not deceived don't deceive yourself and don't let any false preacher deceive you neither fornicators nor idolaters nor adulterers nor the effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of god but well, thank god we are washed thank god we are cleansed thoroughly cleansed look at verse 11 and such was some of you but ye are washed but ye are sanctified but ye are justified in the name of the lord jesus and by the spirit of our god and the cleansing should be visible the cleansing should be practical and uh, the people that know you should know that you have been cleansed you have been washed thoroughly cleansed we're looking at uh, first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 9 it says but they that will be rich fall into temptation and his name and into many foolish and hurtful laws which draw many destruction and perdition somebody is a worker in fact somebody is a christian somebody is a believer somebody who is a pilgrim on his way to heaven will not allow himself to be sucked up swallowed up by the snare and the laws and the foolishness of the world running after this and running after that look at this in verse 10 for the love of money is the root of all evil while which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and they have pierced themselves through with many sorrows verse, uh, verse 11 but thou O man of God are they in the house O women of God are they in the house tonight it says but thou O man of God O child of God woman of God man of God it says flee these things and follow after righteousness godliness faith love patience meekness fight the good fight of faith the good fight of faith don't fight the bad fight of old character but the good fight of faith lay hold on eternal life whereon should thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses and now we we'll come back to second timothy chapter 2 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from the first part of verse 22. Flee also youthful lusts. Flee also youthful lusts. It's telling us here, it's not only talking to youths, it's saying that uh, these laws are peculiar to youth. And as you are growing old and growing older, you may still find that those youthful laws, they, they are still quite, they could be a problem. And those uh, youthful laws that, uh, you know, you experience at 17, at 23, at 25, at 33, the youthful laws might still be there. The old character and the old temptation of those uh, times when you were young, they may still be knocking at the door, flee, flee youthful laws. And then it says in verse 23, Three, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid foolish and unlearned discussions avoid foolish and unlearned investigation avoid foolish and uh, yeah, and the unlearned curiosity avoid and he says knowing that they do gender strife the gender strife and it's the life of a real child of god he abstains from anything that will pull him that will pull her back into the degradation defilement of the world we're reading from first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil temptation abstain from all appearance of evil youthful lusts abstain from all appearance of evil anything that smells like is coming from the devil's kitchen avoid all that anything that looks like is coming from the domain of satan avoid that anything that smells of hell that smells of brimstone and fire that smells of defilement that will drag somebody into eternal perdition avoid abstain from all appearance of evil the point there is abstaining you will abstain 
look at first timothy chapter 6 first timothy chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 20 first timothy chapter 6 verse 20 oh timothy oh man of god oh woman of god oh timothy oh preacher oh pastor oh shepherd oh teacher of the word oh timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding there's something to avoid there's something to avoid you don't just see uh, you know uh, sin and then rush into that temptation and rush into that evil and rush into that and unbelief and rush into that and unbelievers uh, peddling and selling their commodities and then you run into that to timothy keep that which is committed to thy trust if you have something something of value the doctrines of the word of god keep that and if you have this precious gospel keep that if you have the ministry keep that if what the lord has given to you to you is precious to you and you know that god has counted you worthy to give that precious thing unto you and to have that treasure in the earthen vessel then keep that keep that which is committed to thy trust avoiding profane and vain bubbles and oppositions of science arguments of uh, science falsely so-called which some professing have erred concerning the faith grace be with you yeah. i said grace be with you yeah. we're coming back to second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 24 second timothy chapter 2 verse 24 the distinctive features of consecrated vessels those who are consecrated to the lord and you understand that you are not just a minister uh, during the service if you're a minister you're a minister all the time if you're a minister you're a minister 24 hours of the day and every day of the week and you're a minister if you're a minister if you're a real christian worker you're a christian worker in your family you're a christian work even if you're not preaching to your family a man is a man morning afternoon and evening a man is a man whether it's on monday or tuesday or saturday or sunday the same thing a christian worker a christian leader a christian pastor a christian preacher is a leader all the time and so you demonstrate the character of the real minister of god anywhere and everywhere you find yourself hey, look at verse 24 now it says the servant of the lord must not strive Amen. Amen. You're not fight in your office. You're not strive on the road. You're not strive in the bus. You're not strive in the church. You're not strive in your family. You'll not demonstrate anger and then malice and all those evil things. You'll never, if you are a real minister, servant of God morning afternoon and evening at home and in the church anywhere with anyone whatever the provocation it said the servant of the lord must not strive but be gentle to how many people gentle to tell me how many people if you are there i said gentle to how many people all men apt to teach patient uh, there is a characteristic a gentle gentleness and patience we're looking at uh, we're looking at james chapter 3 james chapter 3 and i'm reading here from verse 17 james chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 17 james chapter 3 verse 17 but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable what's the next word there gentle gentle you know there are some people they say they are wise they have wisdom and their wisdom takes gentleness away from them the gentleness or their wisdom takes away meekness from them their wisdom takes away obedience to the word of god from them their their wisdom takes away being a vessel unto honor away from them it says but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without partiality and without hypocrisy and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace amen, amen. 
Look at First Thessalonians chapter 5. First Thessalonians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Reading from verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, one them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. Be patient toward all men. See that not render evil for evil unto any man. He did evil to me. I'm going to retaliate. I'm going to pay him back in the coin he had given to me. He says, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Capital S, the spirit of love, quench not the spirit. The spirit with anointing, quench not the spirit. The spirit of prayer, quench not the spirit. The spirit of intercession, quench not the spirit. The spirit of reconciliation, quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good abstain from tell me all appearance of evil and the very god of peace sanctify you holy and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it you will do it Second Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 25. Second Timothy chapter 2. And we're reading from verse 25. It's still talking about the features of consecrated vessels. It tells us here in chapter 2, verse 25, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves there are people that oppose their own salvation you know that you instruct them in meekness don't fight with them you want to get somebody saved and then you have to take a hammer and beat him and beat out there you don't do that in meekness instructing those that oppose their own sanctification they are hindering their own sanctification, but in meekness, you instruct them. In meekness, instructing those that oppose their own progress. You are meek with them. You are gentle with them. That's the characteristic, the feature of a real servant of God who is a consecrated vessel. You see those unbelievers, you see those backsliders, the things they do is to hinder the word of salvation coming to them and the word of sanctification coming to them and the word of life eternal coming to them. They don't understand they are hindering themselves from getting to heaven and you understand, therefore you instruct them with with meekness in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves if I adventure a uh, God will uh, give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth the point there is that uh, you know you are teachable and restorable teachable and restorable as well as meek you are meek and you are instructive. Verse 26, that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. What are the distinctive features of consecrated vessels? Number one, they are converted. Number two, they depart from iniquity. Number three, they are precious. Number four, they are purged. Number five, they are sanctified. Number six, they are prepared unto every good work. Number seven, they are thoroughly cleansed. Number eight, they abstain from even the appearance of evil. Number nine, they are gentle and patient. Number ten, they are meek and instructive. 
and number 11 they're teachable and restorable restorable what that means is that uh, they give allowance for themselves to be restored there are people who backslide there are people who go astray and they close the door to restoration they are not restorable uh, they shut the door against anyone that will try to help them and restore them but the characteristic of a real child of God even though he might have gone astray or made a mistake is teachable and restorable number 12 faithful and committed faithful and committed and we're looking at um, second Timothy chapter 2 second Timothy chapter 2 I'm reading from verse 2 it says and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men faithful men faithful men who shall be able to teach others also that's the characteristic of a real child of God of a real minister of the gospel he is faithful look at verse 3 then verse 3 it says thou therefore endure hardness challenges come, will come in the ministry the difficulties may come in the ministry therefore endure endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life with the affairs of a worldliness that she may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier I pray will be consecrated committed precious a clean a qualified a vessels in Jesus name point number two now the distinguished fruits of compliant vessels compliant vessels we're coming to jeremiah chapter 18 jeremiah chapter 18 and here we're reading from verse 1 compliant vessels and uh, that's what compliant means you comply you comply the word of god is there we cannot change the word of god whatever others do however others act whatever it is you you have decided that you're going to be a compliant vessel therefore you comply with the word of god that word compliant means you're cooperating you're cooperative you're not a kind of aggressively contradictory to the ministry aggressively contradictory to the word of God you are hearing you are compliant you comply you are compliant you are cooperate you are submissive that's what it means that you are compliant you are easily you are easy to relate with and you are easy to direct and easy to teach you are submissive it means you're obedient to be compliant you cannot be compliant and disobedient at the same time you respect the word of God you accept the word of God and you know that this so the way walk here therein you are compliant your obedient it's meant you are consenting you consent to the word of god when you are compliant when you are compliant you consent to say yes i know that's the word of god i can read that with you that's the word of god i know that's the requirement from god i can read that you consent you are agreeable if you are compliant you are agreeable i don't accept that i don't take that i don't receive that i don't uh, sign to that i read it in the bible i don't i don't to want that you're not like that if you are compliant a compliant vessel is an agreeable vessel and then you're yielding you're yielding you yield to the word of god you bend to the word of god you don't want to bend the word of god you don't want to alter the word of god you don't want to change the word of god you are yielding and you are united with the people of god and that's what it means to be compliant compliant servants of god compliant workers in the kingdom compliant vessels in the kingdom look at jeremiah chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 1 jeremiah chapter 18 and i'm reading here from verse 1 here it says and the word of the lord came to jeremiah from the lord saying arise and go down to uh, the potter's house and there i will speak i will cause thee to hear my words then i went down he himself was compliant he himself was teachable he himself was agreeable the lord told him immediately then he went then i went down to the potter's house and behold he wrought a work on the wheels look at verse 4 and the vessel the vessel we're talking about the vessel compliant agreeable amenable 
a person that is yielded to the lord and the vessel that he made was of clay was mad was distorted in the hands of the potter so he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it as it seemed good unto him you're not judging the potter you're not criticizing the potter you're not finding another venue for the potter you're not saying potter why don't you do this why don't you do it this way he was agreeable and that's the kind of vessel he wants us to be that he will fashion us the way it pleases him we're coming to your acts of the apostles acts of the apostles chapter 9 Acts chapter 9 verse 15 But the Lord said unto him Go thy way For he is a chosen vessel When God chooses somebody He doesn't want that person to compete with him To contradict him He doesn't want that person to All the time try to correct The almighty God Because he thinks he has more knowledge More than the almighty God It's a chosen vessel If it's a chosen vessel It must be a compliant vessel He says unto me to bear my name before the gentiles and the kings and to the children of israel uh, look at the result and look at the response of um, of uh, paul as a result of being a chosen vessel compliant in the hands of the lord in first thessalonians chapter 2 first thessalonians chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 4 but we were but as we were allowed of god he said it's not our right we're allowed of god we're permitted of god we're favored by god and god just brought us into this we didn't work for this we didn't pay for this he says we're allowed of god to be put in trust with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but god which tries our hearts that's a compliant vessel a person that says god chose me and god called me and god put me in place and i'm going to be faithful to him to please the lord look at chapter 4 first Thessalonians chapter 4 i'm reading from verse 1 furthermore then we beseech you brethren and exhort you by the lord jesus that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please god you have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please god that should be your thought every time your consideration every time how can i do this work to please god how can i do this ministry to please god how can i go that errand to please god how can i carry out this to please god how can i do the work he has committed into my hands to please god so ye will abound more and more i pray will abound more and more in jesus name you remember when i was explaining the word compliant i mentioned the word yield yield you're yielding you're obedient unto the lord you're not difficult to direct you're not difficult to control you're not difficult to lead you yield we're looking at romans chapter 6 verse 19 romans chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 19 it says i speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh that as she have this is the word as she have yielded your members servants to unrighteousness in the past or cleanness in the past and to iniquity in the past and to iniquity even so now yield your members do it voluntarily do it cheerfully do it happily do it without complaining yield your members servants to righteousness and to holiness when we do that our ministry will yield fruit if you yield to the Lord, then whatever he has committed into your hand will bear fruit. Look at Psalm 85, I'm reading from verse 11. Psalm 85, reading from verse 11. 85 verse 11, truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land what will the land do? Yield her increase. Our land will yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his steps. Psalm 107. 
in Psalm 107, when we yield to the Lord, when you are compliant, when you are obedient, when you are submissive, when you are teachable, when you are easy to lead and you yield, then your ministry will yield fruit. We're looking at Psalm 107 and we're looking at verse 32. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people. You come to minister to the congregation, exalt the Lord. You're the means of the people of God. Forget yourself and forget your whatever it is and think about the Lord. And it says, exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. It tells us in verse 36, and there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. And so the fields and plant vineyards which may yield fruits of increase. When you honor the Lord in your ministry, and when you honor the Lord in what he has committed in your hand, it says, then you will yield fruit. Your ministry will bear fruit. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verses 26 and 27. Ezekiel chapter 34. Verses 26 and 27. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. And there shall be showers of blessing. And the field and the tree of the field shall yield our fruit. When we yield to the Lord, when we submit to the Lord and surrender to the Lord, then it says, the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase. The work of God will increase in your hand. And they shall be saved in their land. And shall know that I am the Lord when I have broken the bands of their yoke. Your yokes are broken. And delivered them out of the hands of those that serve themselves of them. In Ezekiel chapter 36. I'm reading from verse 8. Ezekiel 36 verse 8. But she, O mountains of Israel, ye shall shoot forth your branches and yield your fruit to my people of Israel and they for they are at hand to come for behold I am for you and I will turn unto you and ye shall be tilled and sown and I will multiply men upon you all the house of Israel, even all of it, and the city shall be inhabited, and the waste places shall be builded, and I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring forth fruit, and I will settle you after your old estates, and will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. You see, when we yield to the Lord, that's what he said he will do. You yield to the Lord and then you'll bear more fruit. Increase in the work of your hand. Increase in your ministry. Jeremiah chapter 17, we're looking at verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 7. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when the heat cometh but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful shall not be anxious in the year of drought neither shall cease yielding fruit you will not stop yielding fruit. You keep on yielding fruit in Jesus' name. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 22. Joel chapter 2, verse 22. Be not afraid, ye beast of the field. 
for the pastures of the wilderness do spring for the tree beareth her fruit and the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength you see that it's talking about fruitfulness when we yield to the lord then he favors us will distinguish fruits and he says be glad then verse 23 ye children of zion and rejoice in the lord your god for he has given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain and the former rain and the latter rain in the first month and the floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil and i will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten the canker worm the caterpillar the palmer worm my great army which i sage among you and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed and ye shall know that i am i the lord i'm in the midst of israel and that i am the lord your god and none else and my people shall never be ashamed and it shall come to pass it shall come to pass afterward that i will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions i didn't hear amen on that one and also upon the servants and upon my handmaids in those days i will pour out my spirit you will be fruit fruit for the kingdom fruit for the ministry fruit of conversion and fruit of abiding converts in jesus name point number three the determined favor for commendable vessels vessels that are commended by the lord vessels that are appreciated by the lord vessels that bring honor unto the lord those vessels have favor determined upon them and they are destined for divine favor we're coming back to second timothy second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 19 second timothy chapter 2 reading from verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having their seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone that nameth the name of christ do what depart from iniquity but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but of wood and of earth some to honor and some to dishonor you will be unto honor if a man therefore purge himself if a woman therefore purge herself if a pastor if a leader therefore purge himself herself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor sanctified and need for the master's shoes and prepared unto every good work what's the reward and what is the favor that god will show malachi chapter 3 malachi chapter 3 reading from verse 16 malachi chapter 3 reading from verse 16 then they that feared the lord are they in the house tonight they that feared the lord it says they speak often one to another encouraging each other lifting up each other challenging each other lifting up each other bearing up each other and it says and the lord hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was reaching before him and for them that feared the lord and that thought upon his name and they shall be mine says the lord of hosts in that day when i make up my jewels and i will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him trouble comes the lord will spare you Amen. calamity is rich in the community the lord will spare you uh, that is the destined favor that's the determined favor for those vessels of the lord that are commendable and it says and then shall you return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serves god and him that serves him not 
Acts of the Apostles chapter 18 reading from verse 9 Acts chapter 18 reading from verse 9 here the Lord gave assurance to Paul the Apostle because it's, if you are serving the Lord there's the assurance that is coming your way look at Acts chapter 18 verse 9 and then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak hold not thy peace be not afraid anybody afraid there afraid to preach afraid to minister afraid to evangelize afraid to knock on doors in your community you will not be afraid hey, look at verse 10 look at verse 10 for i am with thee the captain of our salvation is with you the conqueror is with you the one who has overcome every challenge coming from the devil that conqueror is with you he will never leave you for i am with you and no man shall say to thee to hurt thee i lost your amen, amen. nobody will hurt you amen. everything the lord has given you will remain intact in jesus name amen. your life no problem your destiny no problem yeah. your years on earth here no problem yeah. nothing will cut short your life yeah. you know it's the people who are hiding away who are hiding away from the work of the lord and the lord's okay you want to keep yourself you want to take care of yourself and then he abandons them but the people that go forth and they go out and they said come what me i'm going to serve the lord the lord will preserve your life in jesus name and then he says there i am with thee and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for i have much people in this city in this city the lord has much people and he'll use you he'll use me he'll use us together to bring them in in jesus name and he continued the year and six months teaching the word of god among them and look at chapter 26 i'm reading from verse 17 chapter 26 and we're reading from verse 17 see the promise the lord has given in chapter 26 verse 17 it says delivering thee from the people he'll deliver you from them and from the gentiles unto whom i now send thee to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of satan unto god that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me whereupon O king agrippa i was not disobedient to the heavenly vision you will not be disobedient in jesus name uh, look at something this is very important very important look at this chapter 27 chapter 27 i'm reading from verse 23 chapter 27 acts verse 23 you need to underline something here i'll show you when i get there chapter 27 verse 23 it says for there stood by me this night the angel of the lord whose i am and whom i serve saying fear not paul fear not who i thought you mentioned your name fear not who okay fear not paul for thou must be brought before caesar and lo this is what i wanted to mark god has given thee all them that still with thee apart from the fact that you are protected and preserved even the people that are associated with you your family members they are all protected the people who are serving in the home with you they are all protected and the people who are walking along with you they are all protected in jesus name uh, you must look at that verse 24 again saying fear not paul fear not what's the name fear not tell me the name fear not thou must be brought before caesar and lo god has given thee how many of them all them that sail with thee wherefore sirs be of good cheer for i believe god that it shall be even as it was told me amen 
uh, look at Psalm 105, Psalm 105, uh, I'm reading from verse 13, Psalm 105, uh, we're looking at verse 13, it says in verse 13, uh, when uh, they went from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, he allowed, he permitted, he suffered no man to do them wrong, he will not allow anyone to do you wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, uh, touch not mine anointed. Anointed of the heart in the you know, the Lord in the house tonight. Anointed of the Lord. You are so ashamed you cannot raise up your hand. You think Satan might see your hand and then what will happen? Are you anointed of the Lord? It says, Touch not my anointed. Nothing evil will touch you. And do my prophets no harm do my prophets no harm remember we're talking about the uh, the vessel tonight what are we talking about what are we talking about cleansed vessels we're talking about consecrated vessels we're talking about compliant vessels we're talking about commendable vessels let me show you something you need to see this one we're looking at daniel chapter 5 daniel chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 1 daniel chapter 5 we're looking at verse 1 vessels of the lord anybody that tries to mess up with your life judgment will come upon that one Look at Daniel chapter 5, Daniel chapter 5, verse 1, Belshazzar, the king made a great feast to a thousand of his laws, and he drank wine before the thousand. Belshazzar, while he tasted the wine, commanded to bring the golden and the silver, tell me, vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king and the princess and his wives and his concubines might drink therein he went too far he took the vessels of the house of the Lord and now he was going to drink wine in them to defile the, 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 the vessels look at verse 5 in the same hour god will not waste time yeah. i am a vessel i said i am a vessel a vessel chosen a vessel converted a vessel cleansed a vessel appointed and if anyone tries to defile you and tries to destroy you in the same hour came fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace and the king saw the part of the hand that wrote and then the king's countenance was changed he touched he defiled the vessel of the house of the lord he came, he got into trouble, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees moved one against one another. Well, you know the story, but come to verse 22. In verse 22, and thou, his son, Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself he gazed the lord of heaven and i brought the vessels of his house before thee and thou and thy lords and thy wives and thy concubines have drunk wine in them and thou hast praised the gods of silver and the gods of gold and of brass and of iron and of wood and of stone which see not nor hear nor know and the god in whose hand thy breast is and whose are all thy ways as thou not glorified then was the hand of the lord sent from him and this was the writing that was written and this is the writing that was written many many take care you for sin this is the interpretation of the thing many god has numbered thy kingdom and finished it anyone that touches that vessel i'm talking about the vessel in front of me yeah. anyone that touches or defiles or destroys that temple their kingdom finished yeah. 
verse 27 take care that what wage in the balances and at once found found uh, wanting and Paris the kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians look at uh, verse 30 in that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain they will not touch you they dare not touch you look at Zechariah chapter 8 Zechariah chapter 8 I'm reading from verse 5 Zechariah chapter 8 and here we're reading from chapter 2 rather chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 5 for I says the Lord will be unto you a wall of fire round about for I says the Lord will be unto you a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of you verse 8 and though for thou says the Lord of hosts after the glory as he sent me unto the nations it says which spoilt you for he that touches you touches the apple of his eye can you read that with me he that touches me touches the apple of his eye so you are reading he that touches you touches the apple of his eye no evil will touch you no evil will befall you let this vessel be cleansed let the vessel be consecrated let the vessel be compliant let the vessel be commendable and yield yourself totally in the hands of god go out and work for god the work of god will prosper in your hand your life will be a fruit your family will be a fruit the ministry will be a fruit the local church and the central church will be a fruit every good desire of your life the lord will fulfill no evil i will see you no evil hand will touch you he that touches you touches the apple of his eye there's a wall of fire around you and everywhere you go no evil thing will penetrate in the night it will keep you in the day it will keep you i will see you again there will be testimony in your mouth what am i talking about what are you what did you tell the lord oh lord thank you i know that my life is preserved i know i am a chosen vessel i am a converted vessel i am a consecrated vessel i am a compliant vessel i am a commendable vessel and the blessings of the lord will multiply in your life your family and in your ministry